safety factors and also they're concerned about the public's safety most of all as they should be they backed off and they backed off in a big way they got a helicopter from another law enforcement agency nearby it's working with the uh, ground units down here in the Long Beach area you can see that car just kind of driving around down there pretty slowly but he is very aware that there are a lot of in the area. The reason why I'm going wider right now is to show you guys every now and then there'll be an officer that'll pop up here and there. This car making unusual turns. We'll get you some of these streets here in just a second. Uh, but we were very close to Anaheim and Magnolia earlier on, making a turn back down towards Anaheim right now. Uh, that vehicle not driving very quickly, but not stopping for stop signs, making unusual turns, but he's got to know that there he's being followed because every now and then he'll make a turn and there there is a Long Beach PD unit. Several officers from Long Beach PD in the area around where he's driving. Their plan pretty much is just to let this guy come to a stop and then take him into custody. Running another stop sign there, as I promised, I'll get you some street names, but we can watch it as this vehicle continues to elude officers here in the Long Beach area. So, Stu, obviously this driver knows he or she mm -hmm. is being followed. You said at one point it was officially a pursuit. Uh, police backed off, turned it into a following, and of course that's one of the many tactics they use during a pursuit. Sometimes if the speeds are too high mm -hmm. or it's too crowded of an area with pedestrians, other drivers, they'll back off to try to let this driver cool down so they don't continue to put other people in danger with super high speeds, and they'll change it to a following. Obviously, that's the tactic they're using right now. But this person obviously knows they are being followed, and we can obviously see that they're really not stopping for stop signs or obeying any traffic laws and uh, squeezing by some of the cars on the road and uh, refusing to stop for police. Well, that's right, and I did that wider shot right there just so you guys could see that the officers down there from Long Beach PD, they're not just throwing their hands up and walking away from this. They are out there. They are out there in force. Uh, westbound right now, I'm just going to look out the window uh, just to get that street name. I'm pretty sure we're back on, P on Pacific Coast Highway. But you can see this car just kind of just driving along, you know, not crazy driving, but uh, definitely not stopping and also just doing what he wants to do. Coming up on Orange right now, Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, he's been driving around in these neighborhoods. We haven't seen him take any alleyways. We haven't seen that door pop open or any of those, you know, signature signs as it would be as we've become pursuit connoisseurs over the years watching these vehicles. Uh, the airship above, though, that's a law enforcement from a neighboring uh, city out here. He's calling out the streets. Uh, just making our way over the LA River, going to be working our way over to the 710 freeway here in just a minute. But officers from Long Beach are down there in force. Obviously, this person wanted for some sort of offense. They're saying a weapons offense. Uh, don't know if this was earlier on. They ran the plate and they said, oh, this person is wanted. We needed to pick him up. Maybe there's a warrant. But whatever the reason was, it was a full-blown pursuit earlier on. Lights and sirens, but it was too dangerous in the Long Beach area. Anybody who's out there, they know. Look at that. This this was one of the reasons why this is continuing on right there. Northbound Harbor from Pacific Coast Highway, making a kind of a, not a wild move by any means, but still a dangerous move out here in the Long Beach area this afternoon. Making his way back to the freeway or is he staying on surface streets right now? And it looks like he is picking up so speed a little bit, Stu. Yeah, not so much the speed, but definitely on the surface streets. He had a, had a perfect opportunity to get onto the 710, did not take that 710 option at all, just kind of blew by it. Uh, these are, what I was going to say was, any, any of the, uh, if you're on any of these streets out here in Long Beach or have been in the Long Beach area, you know, very quaint neighborhoods, older neighborhoods, tight streets, smaller streets, some stop signs, some controlled lights, but it is very tight out here. That's the best way to word it. And All right, uh, and Stu. Right now you can see. Stu, we want to welcome okay. in our CBS2 News viewers. They've now joined this breaking news coverage of a police uh, following we're going to be calling this. This was a pursuit earlier this afternoon. Apparently a driver wanted on a weapons violation. After uh, some time, the uh, Long Beach Police Department uh, that was in pursuit, they decided to back off a little bit and watch this driver, see what he's been up to. Because of public safety, they did back off, and this has become a following. And we have been watching as this driver, now under a canopy of trees here, 
has continued to evade police. You see another chopper there in the shot. So while it's not a pursuit, uh, Elsa, my guess is this driver does know that uh, he is being followed yeah, at least, clearly right? Clearly, the driver does know at one point it was an official pursuit. Uh, and we are watching this driver since we picked up the pursuit just blow the, casually blow mm -hmm. the stop signs and other uh, traffic stops and uh, rules of the road and continue on. Now, uh, we did mention it was a following, and there are mm -hmm. several reasons why sometimes, well, there was a pedestrian right there. Right. That's one of the reasons why police back off, because if there's a high number of pedestrians or uh, tight squeezes like this, they will back off to take speed uh, as a danger factor out mm -hmm. of this and continue to just follow the person. Sometimes they know who's behind the wheel if it's the registered driver of the car, so they'll back off on the danger mm -hmm. and the speed and let this kind of peacefully come to an end hopefully and go collect this person yep. after the pursuit is over if they do let them go um, but I don't know about you Juan but it looks like now as this person is going down some of the alleys and streets yep. they are starting to pick up the pace a little bit and as they continue to yep. drive around in circles. Definitely looked like he picked up some speed there in that alleyway now he's back onto surface streets made a left-hand turn and we have our Stu Mundell live in Sky 2, Sky 9 monitoring this as well. Stu, uh, where is he now? I believe we're on Willow. Easy Street was on Easy Street for a while. Willow's the major that he's on right now, working his way back over the uh, 710 freeway. You mentioned that helicopter earlier on. That's going to be the one that uh, that law enforcement or Long Beach is using right now to keep an eye on this vehicle. That helicopter obviously much lower than we are, uh, and he might actually be able to hear or see that one. Um, uh, on, on Willow, we actually just heard them, uh, law enforcement, just talk about the fact that he is on television right now and that this might be one of the reasons why he's actually driving a little bit slower right now. Don't know if those factors figure in, don't know how he's watching us on television, but you know what? Anything is possible, especially on these type of fluid situations. Uh, we're eastbound on Willow right now in the Long Beach area. It's just kind of a cat and mouse game. Uh, they're keeping an eye on it. Obviously, they want this guy to stop. They just want him to pull over and give up. I'm sure that the plan is that uh, they're just going to let that vehicle come to a stop at, in his own time frame, and then officers will be there to take this person into custody. You saw that U-turn. Now we're going to be back westbound on, uh, on Willow Street, uh, working his way back over to the 710. Like I said, if they hand this off to the California Highway Patrol, if he gets on the freeways, things could change up quite, quite radically very quickly. I, and again, we don't know the, uh, the extent of the uh, violation, except for the fact that it was a pursuit earlier on, and he did not stop for the law enforcement, which just kind of amps up any of the other reasons why they wanted to stop this guy. Right now, we're pretty much we're going right over the L.A. River, going to be back by the 710. But these middle lanes, you're probably guessing, like I am, not going to be taking any of the freeways. Uh, westbound on Willow, working our way back over to that neighborhood we were earlier on. Uh, we did see him driving down some of those alleyways. Gosh only knows, was he guessing? Because he, he was pretty lucky. Made his way through those alleyways very quickly and made his way out onto this major. <laughs> Passing easy right there. That was the street he was on a little bit earlier on. But continuing uh, east, excuse me, westbound now on Willow. This might take us out of their jurisdiction. Not sure if uh, Long Beach is going to just keep following, or maybe they might just do, well, he's out of our city, let the uh, helicopter handle it. But right now, still a following of a very dangerous suspect. I can tell you the reason why I'm kind of dragging it on, a major intersection coming up up, up here. Don't know uh, what his plan is, or her plan, as it may be, that suspect's plan, because there is a lot of traffic there. Don't know if he's going to try to push his way through, or perhaps just try to blend in, or make a U-turn. <laughs> or make a completely illegal U-turn there. Um, but, Stu, I, I noticed in one of the shots that we had, it looked like the driver was the only one in the car. We don't know who may or may not be in the back seat. The windows mm -hmm. are very uh, tinted very dark, and I didn't see anyone in the passenger seat. So right now it looks like there's just the driver in the car, but you never know. Um, again, we have been watching this driver go round and round in circles, casually blowing all of the traffic laws and stop signs and rolling through intersections, as we've seen many times before during pursuits, although this one is at a much slower speed, which is very good news. There seems mm -hmm. to be quite a few pedestrians. We've seen, look, there's somebody on a bike there. We've already seen people walking around their 
their neighborhoods. And this could be one of the reasons why police have chosen to turn this into a following rather than a pursuit. They take all of these things into account uh, when deciding their tactic on how they're going to try to bring this to a stop. And that may very well mm -hmm. be one of the reasons there are a lot of pedestrians out right now. We're seeing them in almost every shot here, walking the dog, riding a bike, crossing the street. And, um, and the streets are very narrow. They're very tight. And as we get into the closer to the There's 5 o'clock hour, the kid coming with a mm -hmm. backpack, uh, you know, the, the danger intensifies. The more people that are out there mm -hmm. uh, and the more drivers that are out there, looks like maybe, Stu, I don't know if you can confirm this, but is this driver by a school? That's the second, third kid we've seen so mm -hmm. far with a backpack. Well, he's definitely in a neighborhood. I don't know if that was a school right there on 23rd Street. You can oh, see somebody spike throwing out some spike, spike strips, strips right yep. there. Yep. Uh, and you know what? I'm not going to stay too far away from the car, but you can see those spike strips kind of laying on their side. So yep. not sure if it, it was a successful spike strip type of situation, but definitely shows you that the law enforcement is out there. I don't ever want anybody to think that uh, any of the, the law enforcement on the ground are just giving up on it. They're just following from the air. It is still an active type of situation. They want this vehicle to come to a stop. I'll get you the name of the street right here. It does appear that we're moving southbound again on what I would call a bigger street right now that east of that uh, east of that school that we were uh, at earlier on uh, but you can tell that uh, Long Beach PD being active in this trying to bring this to a stop uh, that uh, toss out of the spike strips may be successful maybe not uh, the vehicle does seem to be still driving but as we talked about in the past spike strips uh, he was on Santa Fe, but now we're making a turn. It looks like we're heading back eastbound. Uh, those spike strips, they don't blow mm. the tires out. They're basically nails with holes in them uh, that are hollowed out that'll basically just kind of bring it to a stop. But it also shows you, though, how this is getting it just a little crazy. Uh, as people with their cell phones are out there right now, uh, basically getting themselves onto, uh, onto their own social media, following these things. You know, it... it, it is one of these weird areas where you know they don't nobody wants you guys to do any of that trust me uh, it is a very dangerous situation this person wanted on weapons charges uh, and also things can go south so quickly when I say south they can go from just a slow moving pursuit to something deadly so quickly uh, but it looks like we're working our way back over to PCH right now. That's going to be that intersection right there. But the most important thing is after those spike strips were tossed out, mm -hmm. it does seem that maybe they were laying on their sides. Mm -hmm. Look at this Ooh. right there. Welcome to California. Yeah, I see you, but I'm not Oh, look at that front yeah. tire. So Just as I too, mentioned. Yeah, it does appear tire. that there, there is damage yeah. from the spike strip on the right side yep. of the car, the right tire there. Mm -hmm. And that's going to that's gonna change things up. This uh, car, that tire going to come off here pretty shortly. And then this car going to be less maneuverable. And uh, this guy going to start giving himself less and less opportunities to do things. Front wheel drive, that Toyota Camry. Uh, my guess, probably the, the four-cylinder version. So, you know, it's, it's a solid car, don't get me wrong. But if you, any vehicle, when you start losing tires, you're going to start losing performance. It's going to make that car run a little rougher and a little bit more... It's going to be more difficult for it to do what this driver wants it to do. Uh, looking out the window, I can tell you that's going to be the 710 as we're on Pacific Coast Highway, heading back into the downtown Long Beach area. Vehicle moving slower. Uh, Long Beach PD, they're oh, definitely yeah. keeping an eye on it. As that tire comes apart, that's, no. it's starting no. to bang against that plastic bumper, so parts of the car coming apart as well. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, maybe the car will give up before the driver does. I say that was one mm -hmm. lucky toss of the spike strips, too, because you were saying earlier that uh, it looks like, and we saw it kind of land on their side, but apparently uh, it was just good enough of a throw of those spike strips at that front right tire. Uh, snagged it, and as you were saying, those hollow nails go inside the tile and uh, tire and slowly deflate it until it uh, is flat. And you can see already how that front bumper is starting to flap in the wind there as that front right tire uh, continues to lose air. And hopefully, at one point or another, here this driver is going to have no other choice but to stop. He has been very lucky. Traffic has been pretty light there in the Long Beach area. And even at one point, uh, when he reached an intersection when there was a car in every lane. He simply made an illegal U-turn and kept going. But uh, got to say, those uh, officers who deployed the spike strips, they turning. picked the uh, right street, right, yep. Elsa? They sure did. It was did. very fortunate, and they were able to uh, 
uh, to deploy them successfully. And one of the benefits of turning this into a following mm -hmm. is that they get to strategize a little bit more and do things like this to be able to try to bring this to an end. We did find out, Juan, from police Putnam. that this is a felony suspect. But that's all they will tell us oh, at this there goes time. The time. And the wheels are <laughs> literally falling off of this chase right here. So hopefully it's just a short matter of time before this comes to an end. Although we were hearing there are possible weapons violations. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that doesn't mean that this person is armed. But they always mm -hmm. have to assume in these types of situations, police do, that this person is armed and dangerous right now. They're willing to put the public at risk by leading police on a pursuit through residential streets and by a school, who knows what they're willing to do once they're cornered. And you've got to imagine the stress level of this driver has now gone 100 fold. He's lost his tire. It's probably very loud inside that car right there. Mm -hmm. The car rolling on its rim. So definitely um, the, the situation has changed to the point where uh, this driver has got to be alleyway. up. He's going down an alleyway between uh, some buildings there. Let's see what he's going to do here. Sometimes when we North see them go down the alleyway. Of Chadwick. Uh, North sometimes. Of 14th, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was just calling out where we are. We, we were on Chadwick. There we go. Seems like it may be coming to a stop. I don't know if he's backing up because there is a, a blockage, or maybe he's finding something else. Oh, there's an officer at the end of the street right, right he's, there. He's getting so cornered. So doesn't like that. Yeah, he doesn't like that. So he's backing up right now. Now they're going to block him in in this alleyway. That seems to be the there plan. There we go. Another undercover unit. So now he's kind of got a. Up, oh, he found another alleyway. Oh, and another oh, oh. There. Looks like there might have been a collision. We're going to move Sky 9 and 2. The helicopter around here just real quick. But it does seem like this coming to an end. Uh, uh, Long Beach. Yes. Uh, wow, officers yep. out there doing the right thing. Uh, bringing this thing to an end, but it does look like he really made a collision oh. right there, uh, helping that uh, suspect to the ground, and they are taking him into custody, but no shots were fired in the end. Uh, the, uh, that officer, you know, he, he was blocking him in. They got into a little bit of an accident right there. Looks like his car took most of the brunt of it, mm -hmm. but right now, that suspect in custody, this looks like we're going to be on near 14th Street in an alleyway near 14th Street near Chadwick. That suspect now in custody. Yeah, certainly this suspect didn't get yeah. the luxury of being able to step out, hands up, and do the whole process <laughs> of walking backwards and then getting down on their belly. They didn't waste any time, Long Beach Police Department, in getting this guy into custody, especially after he mm -hmm. ran the patrol car. That's it. I have to uh, say, that was fast, Stu. It, 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 they, you know, that's how it always ends. Usually very quickly, it, they'll just come to an end. They, those people, they just, the, the suspects just want to run. And they, uh, tr he try, it looked like he tried to get out and run, but there was a number of officers right there. And you can see people out here in the area, probably, probably Channel 2 and Channel 9 watchers, they probably knew it was coming, out there on their balcony watching what was going on as this thing came to an end out here in this alleyway off of Fort, near 14th and Chadwick. Uh, that suspect in custody, no officers injured. Uh, suspect not injured and definitely no shots were fired. Long Beach PD doing it the right way. They kept an eye on this thing and just let this, let this suspect bring itself to an end. All right, Stu, thank you so much. We're going to let our sister station viewers on CBS2 that you are going to be returning to regular programming. We are going to stay with this pursuit here on KCAL 9 and give you the latest as we watch it unfold live. And Stu, it looks like they are now going back to the car just to make sure there's no one mm -hmm. else in the car, although they probably confirmed that when they took this guy down. But uh, now they're just giving a final look here uh, and starting to process, which is now a crime scene. Oh, you know, definitely. And, you know, that car, it took a pretty good hit, but it shows you how those uh, officers' vehicles are reinforced. They have those push bumpers on the front mm -hmm. there. Uh, that vehicle, you know, basically took it pretty well uh, and didn't move, but that suspect's vehicle very damaged and that's that's what it was that's what they kind of hoped for it's something like this if it would have just been him and he tried to back up that car wouldn't have made it too far down the road uh, their tactics out here this afternoon interesting to watch uh, how they're keeping the public safe keeping that helicopter above the law enforcement nearby 
and in the end, it did. It brought, it brought, brought this suspect into a situation where he boxed himself in, and he brought it to an end himself, and that's what law enforcement wants. Obviously, nobody injured, and again, this coming to an end out here in Long Beach. All right, Stu, coming to an end about an hour and 10 minutes after it started. We want to thank you so much for that coverage again. A felony suspect possibly wanted for weapons violations now in custody of the police. Uh, you do have a thirsty helicopter. And I don't know if we're on the internet. I'm guessing we are, but maybe they were streaming us uh, earlier on with the show. Um, Okay, yeah, I just wanted to say sorry to anybody on the internet for uh, cutting into J uh, Judge Judy. I know that uh, some of the uh, viewers disapprove of that. Go ahead, assignment desk, go ahead. Oh, copy, that's awesome. Everybody enjoys us landing. Our airport of our choosing. I wonder what, uh, what's, what, do they have an airport in Maui? In Maui. Beautiful in Paris. All right, we're, we're clear to Long Beach. Hey, everybody, uh, that was an interesting one. Thank you guys for watching. I don't have my Facebook up, so I can't read what's going on. Uh, it was, uh, it, like I said, it was one of those ones where it was interesting now, the uh, different tactics going on. I got to tell you, I heard uh, on the scanner the uh, law enforcement uh, talking about us or other media. And uh, they didn't say it in the most positive light. I try to make sure that uh, we report everything as clearly and fairly as, you know, we see it. Uh, and, uh, again, it was just kind of odd for them to say, oh, hey, the suspect is watching this on television right now, and that's why he's doing what he's doing. I, I don't buy into that, uh, into that uh, school of thought right there. Anyways, Long Beach Airport, that's where we're headed. We're going to go get some fuel. We'll be up for cruising for sweeps you know it is the sweeps if you guys are super newsies if you're not sweeps that's when we compete we up here flying around for six hours eight hours a day oh joy but you know what you gotta love the job man uh hanging out with y'all seeing what we see and getting to fly around in a helicopter you can't beat it uh long beach airports we're going to be landing uh, i'm not sure what they call this airport uh, this uh, fbo anymore ross ross like like the like the closing Oh, we're going to be landing at Ross, You're picking up some uh, good values, you know. We got it at Ross. Uh, Ross is the name of the FBO. What's an FBO? That's a flight base of operations. Basically, it's a fancy, uh, fancy gas station for uh, aircraft. But uh, this one has uh, iced tea and cookies, so we're all about that for free, by the way. If you spend like $1,000 on fuel, that's not 1000 bucks, but you know what I mean. Anyway, something else interesting to look at while we're landing right there. That's the uh, Virgin plane that does all the, the spacey stuff. Uh, it just hangs out out here, and we're going to be landing. And, of course, you know, like I said, always and always love the love. Uh, in the Air with Stu Mandel. That's our podcast. A uh, Brewster. You, you guys got to listen in. It's, it was pretty awesome. That gentleman right there, he's not a, he's not a fan. He's just somebody that's telling us where to park. And uh, and also, just letting you guys know, hey, there's our, there's our, there we are in the window. Um, just letting you also know, uh, Twitter, Stu underscore.